Yes, everybody, welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com, or of course, if you are watching on our fast-growing YouTube channel, that is Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THS staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me, as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ, we're here for yet another episode of our UNC Basketball Look Ahead series. As we look ahead, I know it's kind of early right now, at individual players ahead of the basketball season um, which starts here in a few months. So focusing on sophomore guard Dontrez Styles in this one, for those who don't know, AJ puts out an article on Monday on the same player on Styles and puts out another piece on Wednesday on our website, tarhillillustrate.com. If you guys want to see that, link's in the description below. Go check out those articles after this video is done. Really awesome stuff. We've run a, a bunch of these already um, th throughout the offseason, so stay tuned for a few more and head on over to our YouTube channel, hit the playlist tab and click look ahead series. If you want to see the previous videos we've put out on individual players, but excited to talk about Dontre styles in this one. I'm going to run through some quick stats, AJ, before I kick it to you. Looking back at last season, appeared in 30 games, averaged 5.8 minutes per two points, 1.4 rebounds, 0.1 assist and shot 43.6% from the floor. For me, AJ, he's a guy that improved throughout the season as a true freshman, saw more minutes in the NCAA tournament and, and really had some nice production, especially in Fort Worth, which I'm sure we'll hit on in this podcast. But AJ, before we look ahead, what are kind of your thoughts on the true freshman season that we saw and that Carolina fans got to see from Dontrez Styles? Well, he didn't play a ton. In mm -hmm. fact, I think he played 22 minutes until the calendar turned to 2022. If, if, if the numbers are, if I'm, I'm remembering, I think the numbers, that's about right. Played, yeah. <clears throat> didn't play much. Mm -hmm. And then he had that week where they went to Miami and wake and the team was brutal, but he got to play some. Mm -hmm. And I'm a I'm more believer that mop up snaps in football are more valuable than mop up minutes in basketball. Cause it's a closer representation of what you'll deal with down the road when you become a more regular player. However, in his case, and because I think Hubert gave those minutes so much value, he got something out of being in a few lopsided games. You know, the home game against NC State, the home game against Florida State, where he actually played well in the first half, but got a few more minutes than he had been because those games were kind of lopsided. Mm -hmm. That helped. And then suddenly when he was called on, and you alluded to Fort Worth, I think that really for me, that's what I zero in on. I zero in on Fort Worth. I, I zero in on the fact that he played 40 minutes in, in the first two games of the NCAA tournament, had to go 25 against Baylor, where he actually was one of the athletes that Carolina could put on the floor that could kind of roll with some of the bouncy six, seven, six, eight long guy, long arm guys that Baylor has. Carolina didn't really have a lot of that in their composition, but Dontrez gave them that. And obviously he had to play because Brady got ejected. So mm -hmm. it was Dontrez the rest of the way. He did some nice things. And the three that he hit early in overtime was huge. Because, I mean, Carolina was a landslide. Yeah, open the scoring for him in overtime. Yeah, for yeah they, 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 they were a landslide. They were avalanche falling down the hillside, <laughs> yeah. however you want to describe it. And, you know, RJ had that 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 uh, those three free throws where he drew the foul, shooting a, attempt to get three late in a shot clock, very mm -hmm. late, about two minutes left. Enough to get them to OT. Dontrez's three relaxed the team. The kids have all said that. And I think it relaxed him. I think that that was a moment and a weekend in which he thought, okay, now I understand the method to the madness of what I've been doing. Now I understand those things that Hubert said about patience and process in November and in December. And when you're sitting on the bench and you're watching the guys run up and down the court and you're not getting in the game, what are you making out of that, out of those moments? What are you getting out of those nights? Are you sulking and you're not soaking in the game? So you're not improving. You're not getting better. Or are you watching the games and trying to learn and envisioning what you would do and really trying to become a more cerebral player? That's what Don Trez told me a few weeks ago that he did. And we saw the result of that in the Baylor game, especially he didn't hurt them that day. No. He didn't do a ton to help him. He, he had some, some scored a little bit, had some rebounds and stuff. And then that three was huge, but he didn't hurt them. And I, and I think that that's the key because a lot of young guys, they play a little bit early because the coach is like, look, I got to see what they can do. 
I promise them a certain amount of time. They get on the court, they make mistakes, and then they have to deal with that. I think for Don Tress, he learned the game. He grew into who he was. He, he had a fairly good understanding of where he was at that point in time in his game. And therefore, when he got on the court, he helped the team. He helped them a little bit in UCLA for a couple of minutes. He got on the court in a Duke game in the Final Four. Mm -hmm. And when he did, he looked like he belonged there. Those minutes at Fort Worth were not only huge for him at that moment and that weekend and getting him through Baylor. They were big when he got on the floor a couple more times in the tournament. And they were huge when the offseason started and began preparing for this year because he had that. He doesn't have to question whether or not he can handle certain situations. He now knows that he can. He just needs to add to what he can do. And that's what the last few months has been, have been about for Dontre Styles. Agreed. And, and, and focus on over Harper on Fort Worth a lot, but I really think that is such a catalyst. You took the words right out of my mouth because not only was Fort Worth so big for him the last season in Carolina's run and just having a little more confidence to be put in those big game situations. It's such a catalyst for next season because he can look back like you mentioned on that and say, Hey, I, I've proven that I can do it in the big time. And it's some stats for you solely focusing on his two games in Fort Worth average 7.5 points, 4.5 rebounds and 19.5 minutes per game in those two games. That's big time production from a, a true freshman. I don't care who they're playing. And, and you're talking about playing number one seed Baylor in one of those games at the time. So I think that was such a, a catalyst. And I think it also shows that, like you said, limited minutes early. We saw Hubert not really utilize his bench, something he came under a ton of criticism for when Carolina was struggling, you know, early on in the season, especially. But it seemed like the trust in Styles grew with Hubert Davis as the year went on. Because as we learned, I, I know the Baylor game was a little bit different because of, you know, Brady Man getting um, ejected and all that jazz kind of forced his hand a little bit more. But it showed to me that Hubert trusted a true freshman in Styles. You know, you didn't see the same kind of minutes from a guy like DeMarco Dunn, another true freshman counterpart. In those situations, his trust grew in Styles probably from not only what he saw in the games throughout the season as it, as it went on, but also in practice. And he trusted him enough to put him in those late game situations in big time moments. And, and like you said, he hits that three to open the scoring in overtime for the Tar Heels. And that's a confidence booster as well. And I think it just carried into the rest of his performance in Fort Worth. So, yeah, I think Styles' is last season, you, 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 you kind of have to look away from what happened in the beginning because there were games that he didn't get in. And it's the, it's the true freshman learning curve and Hubert Davis trying to learn his team. But when you look at what happened late on in the season for Styles, making those big plays in big time moments, that, you know, that can't be understated how important that is, not, for, not only for last year's team and, and what it did for that in their run in the tournament, but also looking ahead to next season. That's just got to be such a confidence booster for a guy like him. Well, there was opportunity for him that wasn't quite there for Dunn. And there are mm -hmm. different levels in their development. Uh, Styles, more, there was more of an opportunity when Dawson Garcia left. Yeah. You know, that's what turned the bit. People, there's this narrative that Hubert doesn't play his bench. And I, and I, I chuckle when I read national people who only hopped on board, like in Philadelphia, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a little oh, bit Hubert long. Davis doesn't play it. Well, he... If you add Anthony Harris, who was playing, what, 12 minutes a game, and you add uh, Garcia, who was playing about 24 and a half before the head hit the floor at BC, then that limited his minutes before he left a few weeks later. He finished averaging around 21 minutes a game. That's 33, 34 minutes a game right there. Yeah. Guys that were that were removed. And you so I think an eight man rotation would have been there into February had, had they not had they not uh, either Garcia left and Harris obviously was, yeah, was no those are big losses able losses. to play. Mm -hmm. so, but so someone had to step up. And the thing about it is, is I, I don't know if Hubert totally knew he was going to get 25 decent minutes from Don Trez that day. I, I don't, I think it was like, I got to put someone on the court and Don Trez went out there and, and he wasn't great because he was, he was on the floor for part of the meltdown as was Justin McCoy, who gave them some, also gave them some pretty good minutes. The thing that, that impresses me so much about that, and this is why I focus so much on it, because it signifies growth. It signifies where he was in March, in late March, is he was part of them recovering from what happened during that onslaught that Baylor put, put forth. It was a terrible, melted, uh, blown lead by Carolina, but they recovered. A lot of times teams don't recover in the middle of the game, especially late like that, but they did. And Dontrez was part of that. 
some of the rebounding, some of the defense, and that enormous three, that confident, confident three. You know, he took a three against Duke in the Final Four that he missed, but it was such a confident-looking shot. Yeah. So those are things that you take and say, okay, you can add the stuff now. He's not still wondering that much. He still has a lot to prove, obviously, and he's and he's going to have an opportunity along with Puff at working the three, although Dontrez is doing more three than he is four. Puff has been spending more time this offseason working at both the three and the four, but there are going to be minutes, there are going to be opportunities there for him to get – more minutes early and just kind of see where that takes him throughout the course of the year. Mm -hmm. I agree. And and that's what I want to talk about before we wrap this one up. We're not going to take this too long, but looking ahead a little bit to next season, obviously the title of this podcast, I kind of like what you said there. I I think it's probably a little bit too early right now, obviously to know what styles role may be on this team, especially when you look at some of the new parts coming in. I think leaky black coming back, obviously changes some things up a little bit. We talked about something very similar in the Puff Johnson look ahead podcast that we did a few weeks ago as well, where it's great that Leaky's coming back, but it also affects some of those younger guys like Puff and Styles and maybe the the role that they'll have on this team. I think they're both going to play a lot. I think you're going to see Styles get a lot of minutes. And if any, and, and the main indication of that is, like I said, what he will, I hate to keep harping on it, what he was able to do in big time moments in the NCAA tournament. I think that will build his confidence and build Hubert Davis trust in him. So I know you've kind of answered it a little bit, AJ, but is it, do you agree? It's kind of still maybe a little bit too early to tell what styles yeah. exact role may be on next year's team, but he's definitely going to play. I think it's pretty safe to say that. Well, I think there's a situation, he and, he and Puff are different players. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I, I think one of the luxuries that Hubert's going to have with next year's team is situational stuff. It's going to have guys he can use situationally. You know, Pete Nance may not play 35 minutes a game. I, Hubert doesn't want to play the starters that much. That was a byproduct of what, how everything sort of unfolded. <clears throat> and it got to the point where, look, once you go to the bench, there's a drop off. Although Puff had two really, really good games in the NCAA mm-hmm. tournament, including the national championship game. And, and he had that really good game late in February at state. So we really saw his game sort of take form, but the opportunities are going to be there for Don Trez, Like I said, he, I think he might be a situational guy where one night he may play 20 minutes, another night, depending on who they're going up against and what the situation is, maybe he plays six minutes. And he's going to have to get – he's going to have to be prepared for that. And I think he will. I think last year helped him get prepared for whatever inconsistencies in minutes might be there this year. He he has to trust the process. He has to trust the growth and also recognize that come two years from now, his, his junior year, a whole lot of playing time opens up. Yeah. A yeah. whole lot more playing time opens up. So, you you know, you don't have to take a beeline to the NBA or whatever your career after college is going to be. There are a million different paths to get to where you eventually get. And a lot of the guys that stay the course are the ones that usually benefit the most. And I think Don Trez understands that. Uh, I believe that he's in the right place to do that. Uh, certainly from an NIL perspective, just being on the team, these guys reaped NIL benefits big time, just making a run. What if this club starts out number one and they basically stay in that one through four range because they're going to lose a couple of games they may drop and they end up going to Houston and they win the national title. Being in this program, being on that stage, you could be a walk-on and you put on that jersey and run out of the tunnel and do layup drills. You're going to make money. So it's a really good situation for a guy like Don Tris to allow his game to grow and not start darting around all over the place like some of these kids do, where they sort of get lost on the shuffle and the school doesn't feel, the staff doesn't feel as connected to them to give them the opportunity and, and know their full tracks of their growth uh, process. They know that at Carolina. Don Trez knows he can trust what's going on there. So even if he doesn't play a ton this coming season, it's still going to be a very, very important year because there are going to be moments where they need him to step up to win. And it will be his bridge to his junior year when he has a chance to really uh, take on a huge role on the team. Agreed. I think in his time at Carolina, it might not be next year, like you said, but he will be a guy that is a big time contributor for the Tar Heels. I, I think a lot of Carolina fans agree with that. And I think if you ask the coach and staff, I think they'd probably agree with that as well. AJ, real quickly before we wrap this one up, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor in this podcast. They've been sponsoring all of our UNC Look Ahead uh, basketball podcasts we've been doing throughout the offseason. You guys know who they are if you've been watching and following along on these. It's myperfectfranchise.net, guys. Prices are going crazy right now. 
inflation, you know, all that jazz that's going on in the country right now. We're in tough times financially. Who knows what the heck the job market is going to look like as we continue to go, you know, into later in this year and into 2023. But with MyPerfectFranchise.net, you can take control of your own career path. Andy Ludicky is a long-term, long-time, excuse me, rivals member, diehard college football fan, huge Mac Brown fan as well. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. I know you guys have heard that before, but huge Mac Brown fan. And most importantly, he's a franchise veteran having on multiple franchises and businesses throughout his career. Using his expertise, he helps others find their American dream, dream, excuse me, through a very thorough and free consultation process. Keyword free in there. So guys, call Andy, put your life and career in your own hands. If you've been thinking about maybe, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, you, you see these, you know, franchises popping up everywhere. How do I get involved? How do I do that? How do I become a franchise owner? 100% free consultation meeting with Andy. What do you really have to lose? And guys, if you end up talking to Andy at myperfectfranchise.net, links in the description below, make sure you tell him that Tar Heel Illustrated dot com sent you aj can't speak highly enough andy absolutely love working with him he's a fantastic guy and like i said i'm gonna say one more time aj huge mac brown fan i gotta keep saying that for the carolina fans out there yeah and one of the first text messages i got after the duke game actually after they beat st peter's and got the elite eight or got to the final four and duke were just saying hey you got another game to cover got another (laughs) game to cover I love it. So, uh, so he was following that right along. He, he's, I wouldn't say he's a huge Carolina basketball fan. He's, he's more a football guy, but he definitely likes North Carolina basketball. So Absolutely, he's man. not, he's not a fan of any blue blood. So mm-hmm. a lot of those fans can actually embrace fun teams. They can embrace oh, yes. some of the good teams without having any animus. And he's certainly that way when it comes to Carolina basketball. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, check him out. MyPerfectFranchise.net. Again, 100% free consultation if there's something you're thinking about. Talk to Andy, see if this decision, see if this career move is right for you, and he won't charge anything in that process. Again, MyPerfectFranchise.net link is in the description below. Good place to wrap this one up, though, AJ. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones for the Dontrez Styles edition of our UNC Basketball Look Ahead Series podcast. Again, guys, click on our YouTube channel below. Click the playlist tab, click look ahead series and go watch all of the other podcasts we've done so far. And we've still got a few more to roll out as well. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. So you know every single time we upload and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.